Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, in here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Listen, I feel like the episodes been going crazy lately. Yes. So yeah, we, t- I mean, we just got to continue the trend. We have, listen, yeah. we're not slowing down. We're not stopping for the family. And tonight y'all have been requesting this conversation we are having because today we teach not just the ladies, but the brothers, all right? Brothers, come on in. This this show here is for you because we got these husbands on the platform and we about to teach the single men the game and we in here doing it with my first brother right here. Shout out to Ezekiel Azanwu. Look at him. Here on Look the at show. Him. Welcome, my brother. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here, man. This is... yeah. I'm in the I'm in the place to be. It feels like yeah yeah. 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 Listen, the, the show is is taking off, man. Yeah. If it are if we not already lifted in the air. Oh yeah. yes. And um, the the people that's actually tuning in will surprise you. I mean, wow. it's people in the space. Wow. It's it's high profile people. I mean, everything. They wow. watch. We got politicians, attorneys, doctors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, commanders, chiefs, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So so the, yeah. so, the, so the brothers and sisters we got to bring on here. They got to be top notch. Absolutely. So also, while we in here rocking with my man Will Jackson up in here with us today, on, bro. What's up, brother? It's that ja- yeah. them Jackson boys. I feel like it's gonna Jackson be boys is in here <laughs> rocking today. Right. So you see what's happening. And today we went and found us some married brothers for this conversation. Facts. Sure. Yeah. And we're gonna have a good one here today. Before we get into it, Ryan, talk to the people. Let them know what's going down. Listen, I just want to give a shout out to the brothers, man. The brothers come up here ready. Look at them, Chris haircuts. Hey, look. Chris they haircuts. Hey, fellas, they showing you. <laughs> They, I mean, I show y'all all the time. <laughs> but, don't you get know, it twisted. They, just hit, they hit for backup. The funny, the, back funny, the funny thing is they all got the same barber. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Listen, yeah. so we got some really amazing things going on with the initiate family, guys. I see we had seven initiates pop off the show before we even get started in the waiting room. So I just want to salute y'all for that. But I won't get too much into the details until a little bit later. Tyshawn and I, we're going to continue to drip a lot of the things that we're working on because we are planning some huge things, uh, huge guests, huge conversations, uh, huge events, everything for 2024. So please be patient with it. So the only thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. And I just simply want you guys to forward us over your, your full name, phone number and email, because when we get things popping off, we want to make sure you're in the loop, especially my initiates. Also, at 30 minutes in, initiates only, baby. We got to. Yes, initiates only, meaning the chat will be for initiates only. If you're watching the replay, you need to make sure you're here at Monday and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Because this is really where it goes down. The families ain't having conversation. But you're going to have a good time either way. So let's actually get to it, fellas. Well, first of all, look, before we actually go into a conversation, I want the people to get a good idea to profile of the brothers I got because I got some interesting brothers, man. I'd be hand picking these brothers for the for y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't, I don't just y'all, you gotta understand it's like a heavy vetting process Come now. On. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because, like, yeah, he was interrogating us, man. I, I'm like, I gotta, Come on now. I gotta have a good conversation. <laughs> I gotta feel you, I gotta know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I might have to show me around your house. Let me see what let me tell you. Let me <laughs> right. Hey, run me your social real quick. Right, run me that social real quick. <laughs> but no, for real, man. Y'all brothers, I, I was I'm very impressed with you brothers as a whole. And um, first of all, you have been married now for 15 years. 15 years, yeah. Okay. Five kids, man. Five kids. Five kids. Incredible. Man, Five. I wish we, we should, we, man, we should have had a, a, a family pick for the Y'all people. Y'all don't got no up. photo? Yeah. Because let me tell you, what, the, family's, the family's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful wow. family. I, I just, I love the aesthetics of that. I've been following more brothers like you nowadays. Okay. You know, it's good to have so, that. So you're going to have five kids along with me. I need some people to Honestly, share in this. I'm th- I think I'm I think I'm good with like three. He's, right. You I can tell by like honestly. Three. He's like honestly. You're right. <laughs> the only way I'm gonna really go get five is if I get like four girls. Four girls. Oh, really? Yeah, if I get boy. four girls, I'm gonna I'm I'm shoot four. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep that, that last name going. I'm gonna try to keep the last name going. <laughs> Got you. If I get five girls, I'm out the games. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's real. Hey, but uh, will yourself? You um have been married now fresh in the game married yeah. for one hit one year now yeah what was the anniversary? A little over a year so july 26 okay yeah 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 so fresh. we um you know we are the beacon of hope you know so this is yeah. um our second time around in marriage and you know we've taken a lot of the lessons that we've learned from previous situations and being able to apply them and actually create that space where 
now we're just flowing in this uh what we call the good life space okay. we say it all the time man we just we got a good life yeah. so you went and that's interesting where both of you now yeah are on your second marriage yeah would that, would, did that concern you a bit? Like me and a woman who had a divorce already, were you a little bit concerned? Like, eh, it might be a little, might be a little red flags over here that it was a divorce. Did that not concern you at all? It didn't concern me because I'm one of those who's always looking at myself. So I can't judge you for coming out of a marriage if I've come out of a marriage. And I know that, you know, I'm always a forward thinker. So your past doesn't define you as far as where you are and what you've been through. It's it's if there's the residue there. Is there a residue that's sort of lingering based on where you were? Are you still wounded? Are you still hurt? Are you healed? Are you whole? Because there's a difference. So, I mean, I feel like that we we met each other in that just that perfect space where we really weren't looking for it. You know, I came out of it and said I was done. She said that she was never going to get married again. And, you know, God had other plans. So when we met each other, it was like, OK, the things that I thought that were dead and I wasn't even looking for. It was awakened again so okay yeah. and what, what was that gap like in between the first marriage and the second how long were you so saying? um 2014 so this is uh, i mean we're like eight nine years you know in between it's eight nine years yeah so you had the little detox yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying man. okay because you know, i mean i was it was one of those things that you come out of a situation and until you actually effectively heal you sort of just discard the idea of the potential of it returning back better than before. It's like human tendency is you come out of it and it's like, OK, this is my point of reference. Right. So if this didn't work, then maybe it's not in the cards. So it's you get into that place where you start settling or adopting the idea or the reality that this is just as you know, this is my lot in life until you meet something and you realize, okay, no, what I really wanted was available all along. I just had to be in the right place, had to be in the right space mentally, emotionally, mm. physically, financially, spiritually, and you know, then it presented itself. That, no, that makes perfect sense. And how yeah. long was the first marriage? We were married uh, almost four years. Okay. Yeah. First was four years. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, good. And I, and I want the people to get context because you can see this brother has worked hard, got out of one marriage. And he said, for, you know, he said he had to go back to it again. So obviously there's some yeah. good stuff in this, this marriage pie. Man, listen, that this has is the you place coming to be. Back. This is the place to be. You know, right. it's, it's one of those things that you realize that it's better on this side. It really is. When you when you have the person that you are created to do life with and you got the person who is qualified and capable to help push you and and to support you and you can create you have a different level of creativity in marriage oh, yeah. you got a different level of freedom in in your mind and your heart because there's certain aspects that provide that emotional safety for you to even do what you're supposed to do at the highest level mm. so it's 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 the it's the best place to be honestly and i i can obviously you come back so you let you it's you're, you're living the fact that that yeah. might be true came yeah. back again second marriage and Ezekiel can't leave it, you know. He's I can't, he's can't in let it, for, it go. He's in it for fifteen years. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is a, this is a very important conversation, sir. Because right now, in the echo chambers of social media, the conversation being propelled heavily from the red pill community mm -hmm. and just many br brothers who have had that painful experience with women that there are no benefits of marriage. Like I turn yeah. on my timeline and I see that. A ton even though i'm trying to follow less and less of the messages the reality is uh, uh, men are questioning yeah whether or not the value is there in fact i actually heard one today and i i pulled it aside because i wanted to play it in the show because the, the the video we're about to play right now is a good example yeah. of very common back and forths that you hear men having so lano go ahead and play that one for us because i want the audience to even get context to some things that's being said right now we're gonna get married. I don't want to get married. Why? There's no benefit for the man. He only has everything to lose. What? A man can be completely faithful to his wife, provide, protect, take care of the kids, you know, obviously when he's not working, whatever. And the wife can step out and cheat. And what's the result of that? Man has to pay alimony, has to pay child support, loses his house, loses the cars, 
loses everything why what's the point and then like it's a coin flip flip, flip a coin if your marriage is going to work those are the odds those are the those are the chances if you want to get married cool throw a wedding put the rings on each other say your vows you're married you don't have to submit nothing with the courts yeah. die alone the only reason why somebody is not okay being alone is because they're not okay with themselves mm -hmm. I agree. that's it like if you're not okay being alone you have issues with yourself that you need to mm. now we got a good glimpse of it all right. Yes, sir. You got a good glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that alone will probably give you a good idea of what, you know, some brothers are saying. And again, you know, people are inundated seeing, you know, these celebrity divorces. Yeah. You know, they hearing their mom, maybe their mom got divorced. The, uh, they're, they're inside their household, their best friends. Obviously, that's happening in abundance. We seeing, you know, brothers take a blow. You know, the ladies take a blow and just did these different ways. And it's not looking sexy. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, but you brothers coming back and staying in it, yes, right? sir. Yes, so, sir. So, talk to my brothers. Let, let's start right here because I want to talk about the benefits mm -hmm. of marriage to a man, right? Specifically to a man. And Ezekiel, help me out. Let, 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 let's pop it off right here. Yeah, what would you say for you personally? How has marriage as a man benefited you? Oh man, it's too many. I, I would just say this. As a man, and you guys will know as single men, there is this sense of freedom that we have to feel like, hey, I can be an individual, I can pursue, I can grind hard, and I have nobody to answer to. And we think that is the fullness of who we are until you meet someone that is able to be a mirror for you, to challenge you in areas where you didn't think you needed to grow, to mm. challenge you in areas where only someone else could actually compliment and build you up in. I realized that, man, there are areas as far as my sensitivity and my ability to process in areas where I thought I was wise. I thought I knew better. My wife came along and she showed me my blind spots. I realized how selfish I could be, how inconsiderate I could be, how immature I could be in certain areas. And even areas where I needed to heal that I did not know that I needed to heal. It wasn't until I ran up against the wall of her honesty mm. and her ability to see through and in me that I was even able to realize that I needed to grow. So I do believe that there are single men out here content in their brokenness. No one has been able to confront those areas of brokenness. Nobody's have been able to confront those areas of void and they've somehow been able to manage or mismanage and walk around with a self defense mechanism that they call personality. They're like, I'm like this because this, I'm like this because no, you built this up because you went through this. You built this up because you don't want to go through this. You saw your dad do this and you want to avoid this and you become this caricature and you say, that's me. No, that's pieces of your brokenness that you've glued together and you call it yourself and you realize why certain people are highlighting areas of your life that you think are okay. Like you, you can't stay in relationships. When things happen, you escape, leave things, you move around. You can't deal with authority here and there. You can't take this. You can't talk to your brother. You don't talk to your dad and you don't know what these things are. And sometimes you have a friend. I call, I call a wife a friend. If you can't find a friend in her that's able to show you, Hey, you're really impatient. You're afraid in this area. Have you ever had someone that just look you in the eye and say, I could tell you're afraid here. I, I could tell that you need to grow here or that's an area of immaturity. And when you have that 24 hour accountability, someone you can't escape, you wake up with them. They see you at your worst, see you at your best so they could love you at your worst and love you through your best. I don't think that I think that there's an aspect of growth that you will miss unless you have that person that walks through life through the most intimate and darkest parts of life with you. Do you think that. Because I can imagine it's a lot in that that a man especially that you have described glued himself up in this way yeah. to become this person his ego his pride probably won't allow him to receive certain levels of accountability from a woman oh yeah right were you already kind of prom for that when you when you first got into marriage or did you have to get that ego beat down and you know just had to lower your pride <laughs> in there to get it right or did you already have that straight before you stepped into it so the good thing is you know i desired the will of god and i saw the purpose of marriage before i got into it mm -hmm. i didn't say i was ready for marriage i didn't say that i was mature enough in every area but i wanted to 
chase and strive for the purpose, the greater purpose. I wanted to be a leader in my household. I wanted to raise kids in the fear of the Lord. I wanted to lead my wife in a particular way. And I value that. So if you're outside of that, that capacity and you don't value the institute, mm -hmm. you don't value what marriage means for the greater for the greater meaning of marriage, then you're always going to be at, oh, I'm not about to allow my money to go this way. I'm not going to allow my heart to be put in this vulnerable place because she could cheat on me. That's a fear-based mentality. But my, I was chasing, I want to be a beacon in my community. I want my children to see a father who loved their wife. If you don't value that, then you're go you're already going into it wrong. So me, I value that from 19 years old. And I said, God, I want, I want a wife that's like this, that honors you. And I want to lead like this. And so it didn't have to get beat in me. I welcomed the blows. Like when I saw myself make mistakes, I'm like, yo, wow, I got to be better. When I saw myself needed, needing to grow in areas, yes, it broke me, it challenged me, but I welcomed those blows because I realized, man, this is what I asked for. This is what I wanted to see. And this is what I want to be. So yeah, if you're going in with, you know, self-defense, like I'm, I'm trying to protect my money, I'm trying to protect my brokenness, then you're all you're, you're divorced before you get divorced. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, OK, so Damn. I do understand that mindset. Right. So mm -hmm. more so fear based versus faith based. Yeah. Right. Versus, you know, negative potential, negative outcome versus, uh, you know, uh, more than likely positive outcome yeah but what about the guy who's looking at this thing just like he would evaluate different businesses right mm -hmm. and he's just checking out the pros and the cons statistics statistics <laughs> yeah. and he's just like based on statistics based on what's actually happening in the marketplace the relationship marketplace yeah this is a failing business model yeah i'm not scared because i believe it's possible yeah you know it maybe but, but statistically based this is not a good business model what, what do you say to that person if you're leading with the statistic business model of a marriage then you're calling it a business and when you're uh, when you're taking your lenses and approaching it like that we talked about broken lenses today then you're already making marriage something that is destined to fail like if you're not coming into this with a self-sacrificial heart that says i'm coming into this to break so that i can lead and be everything that god wants me to be in this marriage you're over there trying to evaluate so you can win you're getting every conversation trying to win, but you're not going there. How do, how can I be better? How can I break? How can I lose? <laughs> I want, I want to lose so this can win. I got to die to myself so this can live. So a person with a business mind is just like, where's the profit? Where's the benefit? How could I save myself? How can I protect myself? How can I protect my assets? Bro, you lost. You, you killed the marriage because you want to live. The Bible talks about uh, those that want to save their lives will lose it. And those that want to lose their lives will gain it. And in the same way, those that are trying to protect themselves in a marriage, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to protect my money. I'm going to protect my heart. You've already lost before you got in it because marriage is a game where you got to lose to win. And it's almost to the degree where you have to identify to piggyback on that, what the benefit actually you are identifying. We're talking mm. about benefits of marriage. So you got to look at what do you classify as a benefit? Am I looking for someone who benefits my specific lifestyle? Am I looking for a trophy or am I looking for a wife? Because there are two different benefits to each. Yeah. So my greatest benefit is having a family to cover and to lead and to make sure that I am protecting and providing for. So that's, that's the greatest benefit for me. Now that doesn't always set you up to have the ideal situation where everything is going your way. So it's almost like you got to identify first what your benefits are. Like if you are looking for someone, because nobody has ever done anything great by judging statistics, Right. Like if we talk about statistics, yeah, Albert Einstein would have never gotten to the light bulb because after statistical ideation, yeah. after try 100, I just need to stop. Yeah. Right. But 900 more tries, we got light. Mm -hmm. right. So it's almost as if, OK, if I'm going to judge it based on what the, st the statistics are culturally, one, so what are my benefits? Where's my value based? Because for us, it's kingdom. So I know that I was created for relationship. So if that if I know that that's a, a, a major part of who I am, then in order for me to be a whole man, I need that missing piece. 
right? So I think you, you first got to identify what your benefits are, because I think a lot of men are, are not looking for wives. They are looking for someone who fits the mold to make them feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. So if that's your benefit, you're already setting it up to lose mm -hmm. because culture says that the benefit is you're supposed to get with somebody who makes you feel good about yourself, who's going to stroke your ego, who's going to support every business venture, who's not who's not going to tell you no, you know, that this whole community where it's, you know, you need somebody who is pretty much come in and subservient and we value submission over everything, not knowing that submission goes both ways. So yeah. how do I get to a place where I first identify that my benefit is not not in getting my way, mm -hmm. but having healthy relationship and and us being able to build something of value that we can pass down generational love and peace and freedom to our children. That's so good. if if I'm not looking through the correct lens of what the benefit is, then of course I'm gonna look at it and say, okay, well, <laughs> if I'm looking for a woman that's just gonna come in and cook and clean and do what I say, I don't want a wife. Because that's that's not the role of a wife. A, a role of a wife is supposed to help me meet the the ideas that God has in store for my life. And to help me meet that may mean she needs to challenge me mm -hmm. on certain thought processes or perspectives. And so it's it's just I think we, we first got to outline what what do you identify as a benefit? Mm, okay. Because what you identify will determine what you're seeking after. That's good. So, OK, yeah, that is good. That is good. Well, and. This is the thing. I think a lot of people are confused about what the benefit of a wife is. Yeah. And um, because it just doesn't look sexy, mm. especially when the the experienced brothers talk about it. It's like all this pain and hardship. <laughs> and it's like, damn, yeah. I'm just I'm here for the family photos and the good and the, and the good stuff, the Thanksgiving <laughs> and the Christmases. But isn't that the beauty? Isn't that like when you see a built chisel body? A man that has gone through that work, a man that has endured that level of resistance is able to achieve the beauty. Any man that has made millions has to, can't tell you that it was easy. It was yeah. the process that yeah. he can he can stand on. So why is it that men are looking for the easy way out when it comes to women? To be mm. honest, I don't think a man would truly be happy with a woman that he can literally treat like an object, like a dog, like men, they say, like, I want a woman, a woman that's an asset. Basically, they want a woman that doesn't interrupt their single life, mm. that their single mentality. They want a woman that's just an add on, not a woman that disturbs their their flow. And I think it is it's weak minded. I think because it's the easy way out. Like, why? how could you have built a six pack and still have the mindset that I want this to be easy? And you go into this situation with this feminized mindset that says, I want to receive, I want to receive. No, man, we come to serve. We come to give. Mm. Why, when you look at marriage, you're not like, I want to be a husband. I want to lead my children. It's, I want to receive a woman. I want to receive. <laughs> like, chill out, dog. Like, you're going to build like when it comes to when anybody that's built a business from the ground up, you give, you know, that business, like what y'all doing? I know exactly what you, you mean. You, you put your hands, you know, the cores. I seen y'all work in the cores, even though you guys are the stars of the show. In a sense, you guys know the cores, you yeah. guys going through, you guys working and troubleshooting and you have the resistance and endurance and the patience because you thought this business was worth you putting your hands on and enduring, enduring the hardships, the, the uncertainty, the difficulty. And so, yes, that feels unsexy, but the beauty is on the other side of the unsexy part of the patience, of the endurance, of the the trials and the journey. And I think we have to begin to start, like my brother said, without broken lenses, take the broken lenses off and value the process and the beauty of the muck because the beauty is on the other side of what we think is sticky and what we think is unsexy, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's. I think so much in, especially in social media in this this digital age, we magnify the negative negativity or the negative aspects mm -hmm. of things. Because if all we're hearing is stuff about that's unsexy, we it's a whole lot of happily married people. Absolutely, but that's not sexy for what's marketable now. What's marketable is, you know, I was in a marriage and it sucked and and this is painful and, you know, stay where you are. And and because everything is is, is self-centered, mm. because now this puts the focus back on me. OK, yeah, no, don't don't get in a marriage because you won't be able to have your identity and you won't be able to do the things that you want to do and you won't be able to create the things that you want to create. Well, if the only thing that you want to create is for you, you're selfish to begin with. 
I want to create something I can leave. Legacy is something that I leave behind, but I need to be able to build with someone to establish a family to leave it to somebody. So, and if you're still selfish, don't get married. If you don't want to let go of these selfish men, men or women, I don't care. Don't get married. Marry, marriage is not for selfish people. Yeah. It's for people are, that are willing to drop themselves for the sake of the unit. Yeah. I want, I want to drop a poll on that because one, one, I want to get an idea because the thing is, the show is for the fellas. Uh -huh. Yeah. Teaching the, you know, the husbands is teaching the single men some game. Yes, so I want to drop a poll specifically for the men only. It's going to give me a good idea because we got 800 people in the chat. It's uh -huh. going to give me a good idea how many men are actually in here. Yeah. And I'm going to ask the men, men only, okay? Do you consider marriage to be an attractive relationship, arrangement, status, yeah, well, whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah, arrangement, arrangement is fine. Arrangement, cool. Yeah, arrangement yeah. And good. I'm just gonna put it simply what and tell me what you think about this tie. Yes or no? Um, put on the fence. On the fence. Put on the fence in there. Uh, okay. okay. I want to see the, the brothers fence. that might get converted this show. Yeah. Come on. Some brothers <laughs> might get converted this show, and some brothers might say, I ain't I'm selfish. I ain't signed up can, for that. Can we deal with the elephant in the room though? What's yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I think what seems the most unsexy for at the at on the surface level. Ladies, is, don't do this poll, ladies. <laughs> well, go ahead. That's right. Yeah, we want real stats. <laughs> it's right. the uh, idea that you gotta commit to the especially men that are experienced, men that have options, having to commit to the same woman we are predisposed mm. in our car our carnality and i would just say at the the lowest parts of us that we want variety right we want multiple women we want to be able to experience the world we want 31 flavors that's an ice cream company that we used to have in la um so we want to experience all of those things because we think that there is joy we think there's satisfaction in trying everything and it's funny men you know once they turn 50 and 60 they're like you know what I done tried it all. I'm ready to settle on down because we realized that we could not find what we were looking for in that variety. And I realized more men have the patience to go night after night, year after year, body after body, dealing and experiencing all the spirits and all the skeletons and all the bodies of these women than having to deal day by day building the same woman. There's a there's a difference between having sex with a body and having sex and intimacy with a whole person yeah. and having a, a union. There's nothing like making love with the person that you built with, disagreed with, loved on, shared experiences with. Y'all holding hands. There's certain things, and we don't have to get to that. There's certain things you wouldn't do with a random person. Right. Sure, but sure there's not. another Shouldn't level of... <laughs> Right. Some people, they, they, they some like people be wild, right? <laughs> but there's a different level of openness and intimacy that you can have that you can only experience with someone that you're with day in and day, day out. And I think more men are afraid of of dealing and building in that way than they are with dealing with strength. Imagine more men are open to being naked and having one time experiences with strangers a thousand times than having beautiful more beautiful experiences with one person a thousand times and i will say this this whole idea of you know sex and what all that stuff sex is better when you get practice like the, the the smartest people the people that are best are experts because they've done the same like kobe bryant imagine he was great because he shot the ball the same ball on the same court five hundred thousand times that made him and made him an expert so take that and apply it to sex Two people that have committed to learning each other and becoming experts at each other's bodies, mm -hmm. they can become experts and mastery at pleasures for e pleasure for each other. So what you would have experienced and you thought that was an amazing experience with this random, you could have that times 100 with a person that has practiced you like Kobe. And that's a, hopefully if they were having a level of intention and not just going through the motion. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Two, that's yeah. intention on you and yeah. on that person. Yes. Be careful who you choose, I would say. Yes. And then you be a, an intentional person as well. Yeah. I, don't yeah. don't just expect it and not contribute in that way. You know, one, yeah. one thing I, I do like that you said, and I think it's very important because if we're talking to single brothers, I think a big part of, you know, um, the mindset of being single and especially in our culture is that readiness point. I think everybody is you know, playing with that. Even the ladies, like mm. even everybody's getting married later. That's just what's happening now as, as mm. a culture, right? But I like what you said. You said, I didn't wait till I was ready. I knew and understood the purpose of marriage. Sir. So what is the purpose of marriage? Oh, you want to get deep. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, talk to my <laughs> brothers. Break that down I, for I'm us. not going to go all the way far, but this is it's a spiritual thing. I, we believe God instituted marriage. Go back, Going back to Genesis, marriage is the uh, reflection of the highest 
peak of a relationship that God desired to have with man. And we believe that in the end, we will be reunited in a form of marriage uh, with our Lord and Savior. And so I will say this, when two people come together, it's, a, it's called a mystery, a beautiful mystery, where two different individuals come together and become one, where they actually relinquish themselves for the unit of oneness. That oneness is a is a glory that the world begins to look at and says, wow, I can appreciate the fullness of God because I'm able to experience and see the reflection of the, 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 the beauty that God desires to have with us in that example of a man and a woman coming together. And also family being the foundation of community, family being the foundation of the church literally is the backbone of society. What do you, why do you think that we have the sexy reds and everything falling down, fall, falling apart in our community because there is a breakdown of the family. There's a breakdown of marriage. There's a breakdown of the role of a father and the role of a mother. And so when we when we value the importance of that picture for society, then we're committed mm -hmm. to actually building up society. I believe that my marriage does something for the men that look at me. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe that my marriage does something for my son. It does something for my daughters and everyone around them. Yeah. And if everyone had a commitment to our community in the same way, I think we would have more thriving communities and less of what we don't want to see out here. Yeah. You know, that's the, and that, that's the thing too. That's why the, the video that we talked about that, that, that we just started to show with, it was so, it's so dangerous. Mm. And anybody that is an advocate of divorce or singleness is so dangerous because marriage is the foundation. Family is the foundation of the community. So if somebody is promoting anything at scale imagine at scale people ha people having a mindset that you should not get married that you should not build family what chaos is that nation right so that in itself that is demonic yeah. right it's, it's no peace in that mm -hmm. it's chaos yeah so like that that's why we, we really do have to make a very intentional effort not to only you know, teach the purpose, but also somebody culturally has to make this look sexy, like culturally. Yeah. Because culturally we have made singleness. We have made selfishness. Yeah. We have made individualism yes, all sexy. We have mm -hmm. made that cool. Wow. Very much so. And that's very dangerous yes, to, to do as a culture. Yes, yeah. Sir. So let me give you a huge benefit for marriage. If we're trying to outline benefits, one of the greatest things that I've found in marriage to be a benefit is safety. Wow. Because even though what we're talking about where men can give themselves to multiple women, you only give a fraction of yourself because you know you're not safe. Dang. So in marriage, when you've come together and you have somebody who's committed to you, Imagine being in the place where you don't have to look over your shoulder, where I don't have to wonder if you're talking to somebody else, where I don't wonder if you if you if you're doing something behind my back when you are emotionally safe as a man. And, I, and I'm talking as a man who spent the majority of his life not feeling emotionally safe in all re relationships, whether it be friendships, whether it be in business, whether it be in relationships, I became a master, which I think a lot of men are. I became a master at giving people what they wanted without giving them me. Wow. Mm. So I can be functional in the area of giving you exactly what you need, but I wasn't safe enough to give you me, the real me, the raw me, the vulnerable me. And when you are in a marriage where you find that person where you can be safe with, Jeez. where you can mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually be able to release in a safe place, because the truth of the matter is in culture today, we have created a space where because men, we are not wired emotionally. And a lot of men which are wounded now, which it sounds like the gentleman in the video, is we do this thing where we expose ourselves vulnerably uh, vulnerably once, mm -hmm. right? And so one time we expose ourselves and we experience a level of brokenness. Yeah. What the tendency is from a man then to do is to say, I'll never do that again. Yes, sir. I'll never do it again yep. because it hurt once, so I'll never do that again. And what does that do? I've insulated myself within the wounds of my trauma. And now I've created an institution in my mind that I am not safe with women. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll protect my safety by making sure that I don't allow people access 
to the vulnerable spaces that I that I possess. But when you get in a marriage with someone who is invested in you, I'll tell you, one of the conversations that that really was pivotal for me and my wife, um, I am an alpha male, right? I do, I'll, I'll carry all the bags. I want to, I got it all, right? I'm the king of, I got it. And one time I was carrying all the bags. I had food and she was like, you know, let me help you. And I said, no, 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 I got it. You know, I'm cool. I got it. I'm carrying all the bags and she tries to help, offer me assistance again. Yeah. I'm holding, I said, I got it, I got it, I'm good. I'm a man, I got it. I'm walking and I drop the food. Mm. She turns to me, she puts her hand on my chest and says, let me be your teammate. And for me, that was so transformational because I remember so many times where people became okay with what I could do for them and not being intentional about what, well, listen, what can I do for you as well? Mm. And when you find that place in a marriage where you are safe, where I can just be the real raw me and I don't have to uh, hold these walls up because what we classify as strength is really us hiding. Come on, bro. I'm hiding behind the walls of my trauma. I'm hiding behind whatever is going to protect me and insulate me so that I don't get hurt. It really is a form of where I just don't want to get hurt. So let me let me mask my strength over top of my trauma or my wounds. Mm -hmm. So just I prevent myself from getting hurt again. But when you get into a marriage and you are able to be safe. I'm telling you, bro, that is transformational. <laughs> Emotional safety for a man, crazy, is a game changer. Jeez. Hold on, wait, 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 you because this brother's going in. Yeah. I want to just let everybody know right now that we're thirty minutes in, actually uh -oh. about thirty six minutes in. So the members only chat. If you're not an initiate, the chat is only for the initiate. So come on in, join the conversation, join the family, join the initiation happening here with these amazing brothers. And um, also, we already got well over a thousand people in. Only 298 likes. Please, guys, smash that gray like button. That's what's going to send this thing around the space of YouTube. And y'all see what's going around here. We need messages like this spreading and running and winging high yeah. right online on these algorithms. So hit that like button for me right now. And Ryan, close that poll out because the brothers went ahead and voted in here. Those are big facts, man. Over a thousand people in the room. The super chats is coming in, by the way. Men only. Do you consider marriage? to be an attractive relationship arrangement. We got over 120 votes and that's 70% of men say yes. Wow. So to kind of give wow. you an idea, 120 is, is okay, is okay. Cause usually I would say, depends on him in the room, we'll probably get about a third of the people that's in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we probably got around a third of people usually vote. Man probably around 250 or so men right. probably yeah. in the chat. So mm -hmm. that's okay. So 15% okay. yeah. no, and about the other 15 on the fence. Well, actually 17% on the fence. Yeah. So we got some brothers that might need to hear something yeah. to switch <laughs> things around. Yeah. And you know, I mean, y'all talking heavy right now because when we talked about benefits, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. You said you wanna lead, you specifically, you said you just wanna lead the family, you wanna lead the household, which is beautiful, but some brothers probably thought that sounds more of a responsibility than a benefit. Yeah. Now, what I'll say is when you just broke down this emotional safety, come on, this emotional uh, vulnerability, th th this place where we can kind of let the walls down a little bit. Yeah. Now, I think you start saying, brother, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that's one. Yeah. Right, that's right, one, right, that's right, one right, tally markup. <laughs> we got one tally markup right now. And see, I think another key thing we got to actually find, because you, first of all, the way that's your current wife that did that yeah she's like oh my gosh yeah shout out to you right <laughs> because that was done so well yeah not just because uh, because obviously we highlight the fact that she did that mm -hmm. but fellas got to understand this too because i think a lot of guys might be in situations where they're with women who don't know how to create that safety yeah, yeah. right because there's different ways to handle that same situation mm -hmm. there's a way where you could do that and instead of a woman might you know seeing that he's Although he, it, it is that's pride mm -hmm. there. Absolutely, it's it's that that's beautiful. It's you wanting to be a man, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But instead, uh, somebody might easily jump in and say, "See that? You always want to blase block you." Somebody you might let get, me help you. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's anti creating that space. Mm -hmm. That's anti now want to talk to you. That's anti now want to open up. Yeah. So, 
how is it our job to cultivate this emotionally safe space or is it our job to feel around to see if it's space to see if it is safe for us mm. so and i want you to jump in on this bro i believe that you can't actually seek out a place of safety until you yourself have identified three aspects of one where am i how did i get here and where am i headed i, I say that because one of the foundational core duties of a man is to secure vision right as visionaries we're talking about you know i just want to lead the family a man is at his best when he's in a place of leadership when he's thriving in that space but in terms of emotional safety when you are trying to feel around in the place and you don't have a clear understanding of what you are looking for then you open yourself up to people who are not qualified to fit that space mm. So if I if my if my radius is vast and I'm just looking for whoever may try to throw their hat in the ring, then my probability of me getting hurt is high. But if I stop first and I say, OK, before I start looking and before I start exposing myself, let me figure out where am I? Where am I as a man? What what has contributed or attributed to me getting here? What are the things mm. that I'm susceptible to? What are the things that I'm carrying? What are my likes? What are my dislikes? What are my negotiables, my non-negotiables? And when I have that, it narrows my focus. So now when I start exposing myself, it's more meticulous. And I think sometimes because we haven't stopped and done that inner work mm. and we're just opening ourselves up to just random people then the people who were never even qualified for that space, when they do damage, then we apply that damage or that wound to the whole pursuit. Mm. So now it's not even about this person hurt me. It was the fact that I opened myself up. So until I outline exactly where I am, how did I get here? What are some things that I'm susceptible to? Because I had to also learn the things that were my hot button issues. I had to learn what are some of my propensities. I had to realize that there are certain things that I'm more prone to do, things that are uh, triggers for me. I had to identify that in, in that space. And then I also, one of the key things that you have to do as a man, I believe, is to have the vision as to where you are headed. Because if I understand where I'm headed, then I won't just try to staff my life for now. I would try to staff my life for next. Yeah. So now I'm not just getting with somebody because of how you make me feel now. Mm -hmm. My focus is, can you can you come alongside me now? Mm -hmm. But also, are you qualified to journey into next with me? Come on. So then it's a very narrow focus. And so then I'm not just reaching random. I have a specific focus. Like a person, we're going back to the idea of a guy who is uh, consistent about his fitness journey, right? You right. guys are in shape. You're right. particular about what you eat. You don't just go to any restaurant. You don't just stop at anything because you have a focus mm. of what I want my body to look like, how I want my life to be, how the, the, how I want to feel, how I want to look on camera. You have a focus. Now apply that same focus in a relationship. Okay, I know where I'm headed. I know what I'm building. I know who I am. I know who God created me to be. So now I have a complete focus as to where I am. So I can't just go anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't expose myself to just anybody yeah. because then if I do that, if it literally wastes all my progress, what yeah. does it look like to spend six, seven months working on, on your body, building this physique that you desire? Then all of a sudden you just stop one day and say, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just start eating anything. Mm -hmm. You just wasted all of the progress. Come on, right. bro. But it's having that, that, that linear focus, that narrow focus to say, okay, what am I looking for? Where am I? How did I get here? Where am I headed? Because then that helps me narrow it down because then I can start the process of elimination to even exposing myself. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just exposing myself to multiple people just because you cute or because you got a nice shape or because we had a nice vibe and I don't know where I'm headed because I think a lot of men suffer from the fact or the lack of vision. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going. So I'm open to wherever may the, the, the road may lead. I'm letting life lead versus my focus and my vision lead. And when that happens, that's when it's dangerous because I'm just, hey, this feels good for the moment because I'm not even thinking about next. Mm. I'm just here right now. 
And if you only focus on now, you will risk next for pleasure in the moment. And then you'll look up and say, okay, well, that didn't work. So I'm never going to do that again. And this is this vicious cycle. Man, I love a framework, man. (laughs) (laughs) I love a framework. So it's about the brothers need to assess where they are, Mm -hmm. how they got here, Mm -hmm. and where they're going. Yep. Now, I love a framework too, because the I mean, we use frameworks to build businesses. You could build relationships, it just helps you could build on top of the frameworks. Now, but when I'm hearing that one, that actually sounds like more of a prerequisite, yeah, as well. Yeah, because I know we 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 like to say it, but because I don't really believe all the way that you can't be ready for marriage. Okay. Now I'm not saying there is this ultimate readiness right, for marriage, right. but I do believe that there are some prerequisites. <laughs> mentally <laughs> prepare. You can mentally yeah. prepare yeah. for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you mentioned a single, the single mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I will say, I want to add on to something that he said with that that beautiful picture of her putting her hand on your chest and saying, Let me be your teammate. And I think sometimes as men, we want to be Superman. We want to perform for our women. So mm. we want our women to see us like every man needs a Lois Lane. So this is what I mean. Like Lois Lane loved Superman, but when she discovered that he was Clark, she was like, oh, okay, you're okay. I like Clark too. Mm. And so here's the thing. My wife loved me and helped and encouraged and poured into me at my weakest. And I think we're not able to discover that unless we're willing to lead in vulnerability. And that's why you can't, like you said, you can't be vulnerable with everyone. And I think that's why building friendships from the beginning is really important. I think if we get into the habit of, hey, can I build a, a safe friendship with this person? We go in wrong, like, all right, panties. Like, no, like <laughs> scale all the way back. Like, can we be friends? Can we have good conversation? And as I open up and then I show you parts of me, my weakest parts, how do you respond to the weakest parts of me? How do you respond? How do you deal with Clark? I want to know how you deal with Clark because everybody celebrates Superman. Everybody loves when I show my powers and I flex my strength. But what do you do with Clark? Nobody knows Clark. Nobody knows his difficulties, his challenges, his geeky quirks and all of that. How do you deal with Clark? I remember the time when I was running our tour 2017. I lost. I blew um, over six um, six figures in a, in a day. Whoa. In a day. And I came home. I I blew that money plus all of our personal money, savings and everything. And I came home and I told my wife, I was like, this is what happened. And she looked at me. She was like, okay, well, we're going to work and we're going to make the next move. It's cool. And to this day, she hasn't brought that moment up. What? Bro, I'm a Nigerian. Nigerian, we like to provide for (laughs) our women. We like to provide. So that was a moment where she had, I actually gave her a permission slip to rip me to shreds, to show me. You should have listened to me. You know, I, I told, told you to be more careful. All that she just said, I know what's in you. Let's just figure it out. And I was just like, so that's what you do with the weakest parts of me? Mm. She, I, done turned, I turned into Superman after them. All right, we're going we gonna to do whatever we got to do. All right, now I got somebody that, that saw my weakest and saw me from me. And after I come down the high of the stage and I, 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 out of the lights, she looked at me. No, my call me by my first name. She said, we're going we're gonna to rock this out. And so I don't think a lot of men have an opportunity to see that first because, you know, they jump into bed too quick. They never expose. Like, it's so funny. We'll, we'll, we'll give a woman a naked body before we give her a naked heart. And so I, Damn, oftentimes sure. friendship is something that we, we put on the back burner. And oftentimes we never get to build a friendship because we're just physical, physical, physical. So start with friendship, build that up and allow yourself to get to a place where you can share some of the vulnerable places, the Clark, the quirks, the, the, the weird parts, the weak parts, the part that you need to grow in and see what she do, does with the Clark. And with that, you can use to assess to say, wow, if this is what she does with Clark, Man, I know she got Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Superman. It, Superman is easy. Everybody can handle Superman. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, y'all got some wives on y'all. Cause I'm yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing these oh, stories. Yeah. That's a hell of a test to pass right That's there. My because homie. I'm talking about blowing over a hundred grand in a day. Oh, yeah. And one th- man, somebody not coming back. I told you so is just oof. That's easy. See, notice, notice, ladies, that he brought up and my fellas on here. That she never brought it up again. Yeah. Because that's, man. That's huge. Talk about pet peeve. Bro. And she got the license. She got the license too. She could not be like, yeah, you. you I mean, that's, that was, I mean, yeah, that was a moment. (laughs) 
<laughs> you messed that one up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but listen, yeah. first of all, the family is showing in here love. Yo, right. it's, it's really Call, going we crazy gotta right shot, now. We got to shout the family out Well, right this now. thing, first off, we've had over 15 people to join the Harley Initiated family already. Already? So, yeah, incredible. This, yeah, this is incredible. Yeah. Plus, special shout out, though. Special shout out to my girl, Yali, and Get Rachel Ray, and the Silver Fox. We got the fellas. The Silver, Silver Fox, Fox is in the building. <laughs> dropping bottles. We got to get a sound for that. We got to get a sound <laughs> for when the initiates is dropping bottles and helping other initiates, uh, future initiates, get into the family, which is crazy. So all yeah. together, that's like 30 plus people already added to the fam. So I know we're going to be over 700 by the end of the I night. I love it. We got the Super Chats coming in too, which I want to talk about. Shout out to Sterling Hopkins as well. Sterling, I've never seen you in the live chat. Sterling, listen, Sterling supports the program, by the way. Uh, yeah. He's always showing love. But to, to see him in the live chat is big. So that's how I know the, the live is going crazy. But I got a question for you guys. So we talk about intimacy just a little bit. Yeah. Before we dive in too deep, because I think we're ready to take some calls in a second, right? Yeah, we are. So we had a super chat come on uh, for SBU. Shout out to SB, uh, SBU. SBU Live. This we was had a her great on the show. question. And the thing is, she was on the show. And y'all got to watch that. We had 50-year-olds teach single ladies the game legendary show <laughs> legendary show legendary over 130,000 views already wow. yeah and within a matter of a few weeks so it's that's incredible and um she asks as this of both y'all by the way because i don't know who wants to go first on this right. yeah this is a good one but as men of god mm. capitalize men of god <laughs> 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 what is your stance on premarital arrangements was it premarital pre 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 no premarital agreements yeah okay does that mean does that mean prenuptial I don't, I don't know, and y'all, y'all can educate us. Well, because when I read it, actually, I read it quickly. No, it says premarital. You're right. It says premarital agreement. Is premarital agreements is that a prenuptial? Or is that agreeing to having sex prior? No, can no, we no. Let's, let's 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 assume prenuptial. Okay, okay. okay. Let's okay. assume prenuptial. Let's yeah. start there. Yeah, you want, to, you want to take that? One? Yeah. So Say for, God made attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, right, I feel like that I'm not knocking people who do prenuptials. However, I do think that when you go in with the mentality of I need to protect my exit, then you are subconsciously putting yourself in a space where that's an option, right? right? So if I have to go in and protect my money from you, then I really don't trust you completely. Mm -hmm. If if I got to go in and I'm thinking that there's there might be a day where we're going to get a divorce then let me go ahead and establish this now. Subconsciously, I left that door open. Mm. So now it's one of those things that if ever there's a money issue, it's going to be a heightened thing to where I have to make sure that I'm protecting my investment my over my relationship. Mm. So that's that's my stance, because I feel like if anything, you're going in hedging your bets on the possibility then what you're doing is subconsciously creating the possibility. Mm. And we don't accept that situation in any other scenario. Imagine a woman that says, I want to protect my future. So let me holler at this guy that I, I, has been trying to get at me and you'll be my plan B. So I'm just making an agreement with you. Yeah. <laughs> if things don't work out with my husband and you're single, Let's just pinky promise that we got this thing and we protect each other for each other. So if anything happens, we already know the deal. Would you would would any man be comfortable acknowledging that type of agreement? No, that's wilding. It's the same mindset. You're going in planting a seed and recognize man seeds, bro. So like is but is there an exception for my brothers who have a level of wealth that they've already established Do without you without any without any involvement of that woman yeah, relation do you think is that a, uh an exception or do you think that he still should walk in not even planning for an exit thinking about it and just walk in and you know have that level of exposure there in the way he sees it right of his assets if it were to fail what, what's your thoughts on that for that brother in particular keep in mind this brother this we talking about one two percent may at most top ten percent brothers but still yeah. What do you think about that? And, and let's just acknowledge that not all men have equal, not all created equal. So we don't all right. have the same equal level of discernment, equal level of opportunities. We don't all meet the same people. Yeah. Right. So some men could genuinely make a mistake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So I feel like the, it's, it's, it's twofold. I think the difficulty for the man 
oftentimes who's amassed wealth and success has become insulated in what's best for him. Right. So it, it, while it may be a good business move to protect your wealth, right? It's right. A, it, it makes sense from a business perspective. A lot of times when men reach a certain level of success, a wife becomes an accessory and not a necessity. Come on, bro. Wow. So now I just need somebody just to be here to rub my back and not because I really don't need you. Talk. Right. So if you're dispensable and you're no, you're not a necessity to me, then of course I'm going to protect what I value most. It, it, it really just proves your value system because here's, here's the real truth in essence. If I am choosing someone on the basis of what fulfills my desire and not my destiny, then I'm already setting myself up for failure because if I'm only choosing you, I'm successful and all I need is somebody to rub my back or make me feel good or, you know, whatever the case may be then I'm not choosing a wife. So then I'm entering into an agreement with someone who's not qualified for this position. I'm choosing someone just because of how you make me feel. That's not my, that's not a wife. Mm. So if I'm going to marry somebody and enter into a, a legally binding agreement that you are my wife, then I need to be careful about how I choose a wife. And the problem is that men reach success and all they think about now is what makes me feel good mm. because now I'm successful. Mm. So now I can be focused on me Yeah. when in all actuality, the more success you, you actually accumulate, it should become very hard for you to connect with people because now I need a specific woman mm. that if I've amassed, if I'm in the top 1%, then the woman I look for has to be super strategic. She has to be able to meet the, the needs that I have mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, be able to steward. If I'm a successful man in top 1%, I'm not looking for somebody who's sexy. I'm looking for a good steward. Because your job is to come in and we are going to grow and steward this together. So I'm not just looking for someone who, who looks good and makes me feel good. Can you come beside me and help me steward this 1%? Mm. Can you come beside me and help us grow this even more? Can you come beside me and give me the safe place that I need to create, to give me the safe place that I need to develop and step fully into my purpose? Because success financially, I hate to break it to you, it's not your purpose. Well, you being su successful financially, you can have all the money in the world. It's a lot, I know a lot of very, very wealthy, miserable people. Come on. So I think that when you go in and if, if you reach that place of success, there needs to be a level of intentionality now of how am I securing a mate? Because if I'm just looking at an, an accessory, someone that just looks good. I'm looking for a trophy and I'm not looking for a wife, but I put a trophy in a wife's position. Then I'm jeopardizing everything that I've built. So if you just, if you build success, I think that that needs to narrow your focus. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's beyond, it's beyond beauty. It's beyond, you know, what you look like or how you make me feel or the, you know, the, the, the tangible aspects It's how can you, can you help me maintain peace of mind? Can you help me to cultivate vision for the next? Because if, if the real truth is this, if I've amassed this great sense of wealth, right? And it somehow just doesn't work. I didn't lose the essence of me that created the wealth in the first place. Talk. Mm. So if I, if I was able to build it and establish it and create it, and for some reason, if I chose incorrectly, or if this just didn't work or something happened and, and this happened and now I have to pay it, I didn't lose me talk. So if I created it once I can create it again. I can, I can reproduce it all over again. Right. But am I getting tied to the money? Is, is, is this what I'm really married to? And I just want you to be almost, uh, I'm making my wife, my side chick to the my greater money. commitment is to the money. Yeah. I'm because that's what happens is I want to make my wife, my side chick to my money. <laughs> and so mm. then it's, it's okay. I, I don't look at you in the proper light. I just need you to come here and make me feel good. I need you to, I need you, even though you have the title of a wife, I need you to fulfill side chick duties. 
Mm. Because my money, my business, that's my wife. That's what I'm married to. Would y'all be okay if a Talk woman heavy. if a woman had a prenuptial agreement on her mind to protect her wealth getting into relationship with y'all? <laughs> I thought they already did that. I thought they already keep yeah. one in the side pocket, the back pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hear that, that yeah, advice. No, I mean, that's just what you know. I don't know who's teaching what around here, <laughs> but I do think women do do that naturally. Do they not? I mean, we have to ask women, do they not keep these I mean, other all, available options in the back of their mind or in some reachable place in case you fall off? I mean, I mean, is that not like natural to survival? You're talking about just particular, a dude in particular. I'm just saying, saying a, a, a general. I'm, listen, I'm, only asking, women, I'm, not making, women. I'm not accusing nobody. Matter yeah. of fact, I'm going to drop a poll on that. Yeah. No, it's in all the, Even, cause, cause, no, I'm not saying they're not fully committed. I'm not saying they cheated. I'm not saying they flirting with the dude. They're keeping in contact with the dude. I'm just saying, realistically, does the average woman have one secret two, stash. a secret stash mm. of guy that she can go back to in case things don't work out? That I think, is I, destructive. I think, she, I, think she, <laughs> I, I, I think she only has that if she really don't like... I mean, I really do think that if a woman is truly all in, like you really have her mind and her heart, like she's not going to have the capacity for another man. See, I'm not saying that. No, but see, I, but, no, but that's what I'm saying. I think when when those side options start happening, because we hear about it, like we had Dr. Tart on here. He said typically uh, about, I think he said the statistics goes that a woman starts making planning for the exit three years prior to a divorce happening. So if she's no longer being fulfilled or served in a marriage, then all of a sudden you're right. Like this, this space, this room, for these other things, this exit strategy, this new man, this new job, these new bank accounts, all this space Dang. is going to be able to be there. Dang. But when you are fully occupying mm. her in that way, when she's like fully being served mm. and she has no hunger for nothing, I don't, I, I, I don't think that woman is going to be doing that unless she... My, like my man, uh, Dr. Darius Daniels said, he said, if your woman leaves, it's better be because she greedy and not because she needy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But that's a good poll. And it's funny because I, you know, I had another, we got to draw some polls tonight because I want to talk to the people. As a matter of fact, here's what we're going to do because we're getting ready for the initiation hotline and I didn't get your take on that one too. Uh, I want to get your take on this prenuptial agreement. Uh, but here's what we're going to do. Ryan, I actually want to go ahead and allow us to get the initiation hotline link in. Fellas, here's who I want to talk to tonight. I want to talk to my single brothers that are vetting out some women. My, my single brothers, especially, please let me get one of these brothers on the fence. I want a brother who got some questions, who's finding them a wife, vetting one up or about to. And I want to get you up here. I want to get, really talk to my brothers up here. So we're going to drop the link. We're going to pin that, um, that link up here. So we can get that. So be patient with us. As a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drop that joint inside the chat right now. And my brothers, just so everybody know, when you come backstage, put your name down. When you come backstage and once you get in there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure you got some good light, y'all. Make sure you got some good light. Your camera's on, your audio's on, and you're in a nice, quiet environment because we're going to bring you on. We're going to talk to you in front of the family. And I really want to chop it up my fellas tonight out here looking for some wives. All right? <laughs> And big shout out to my man, man, big shout out. We got the brothers are really showing up heavy tonight. Shout out to Carlton Cardi Jr. Not only did he join the membership, but he said as a single man currently working to become the best version of myself and my future family, I want to thank you guys for the thought provoking content. I mean, yes, that's brother. a huge, huge for lo you, lot man. of love. And shout out to Larry Love Jr. as well. And Lydia Weir and Kat Harlan, which all seen to be agreeing with this gentleman that you guys are dropping some gems tonight. So right. that's good. I dropped this poll, by the way, too, because we got to get some answers. It's for the right? ladies. <laughs> and listen, and this is the thing. So, because the ladies be upset with me sometimes. Oh. They be like, Ryan, you such a jerk. <laughs> oh, no. How you going to say that? <laughs> and the truth is, I'm only an investigative journalist, okay? <laughs> I just truly want to find out the truth. You want the answer. That's, that's it. That's it. So, ladies only, the scenario, ladies, you're in a committed relationship. This is a scenario. Whatever you define as committed is a committed relationship, okay? Do you still keep other options if things don't work out? These are options I laid out for them. A flat out, oh, no, no. I got yes, but I don't keep contact. 
Because <laughs> that, <laughs> that may be an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got no, and I got depends on how long we've been together. I meant to put an absolute yes. So you can just, so if it's an absolute yes, which the ladies, maybe, maybe I don't know. You can drop that in the chat. But I want ladies to answer that question. Right now, we got 150 votes. 84% of the ladies are saying no. But the ones that are being honest, they're saying yes, but I don't keep contact. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Y'all laughing. They scared. They gonna say they why I'm making hard. <laughs> no. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna speak to this. Is is one thing that me and my wife did. We literally sat down and went through the list of people that we were connected to, and just start blocking people. Yeah. Yeah, I like that exercise. We literally just went through, hey, who who are you talking to? Or is it somebody that you flirted with? Or, you know, somebody that I had history with? We just going through, we just blocking people. There's no yeah. conversation. Need. It's because what happens is, is as long as people have access, they will lurk. Yeah. They will lurk. You know, and, we, and yeah. then they'll just slide in and send, you know, they'll do little subtle stuff hey, like, like your pictures. And <laughs> well, they won't even go as much as doing no. that. They'll like your pictures yeah. of subtle. you and your wife. Ooh. Right. So they'll they'll be strategic in how they are presenting Savages. themselves. Savagery. Right. Because I don't want to appear a threat. Like it's it's the game. Dang. So what happens is is that if you aren't in the space where you are cutting off access because access is the enemy to progress mm -hmm. as long as i have a door open a crack uh, i tell people you know all the time i am a crack filler i'm always looking for cracks mm -hmm. because if you catch it as a crack it's not a canyon mm -hmm. so but you know and uh, jumping on there but what do you think about in terms of access like people having access to you Ooh, you gotta shut down the access. i love the block block ministry man we are about the block ministry but i think it's also about open communication that also deals with the cracks because if these the secret stash is in the back of the mind mm. it's in the deepest parts of the heart so to know that there are doubts those things need to be laid out. If I have doubts about you in a relationship, there are some issues or I'm unsatisfied here or there. Those things need to be conversations because if they're thoughts, then the thoughts are the doorways. I don't need to have contact with somebody. But if I have doubts about my wife, I'm having feelings and voids in my relationship. That is the doorway. That is the gateway <laughs> to problems happening. That's so good. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. we're about to get it popping right now because we, we got the initiation hotline getting going.